Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here with Season 2 Regrowth Episode 5. The minions are still working on improving a couple of different seeds for me. As you can see, our dye seeds are now fully grown and are starting to work their way around the snake. I'm going to automate that uh, early-ish ever lost. But yeah, another stack of the stone and the wood wouldn't hurt anything. So, they've done quite a bit in terms of getting a lot of the grind that would have taken me a few hours uh, to do out of the way. Like all of this wood, cooking it, a lot of it into charcoal. We've got plenty of charcoal to feed our endo flames. And they're not really progressing anything so much as doing a bunch of what I've already done for me. Things that I would have been doing off camera. So I am extremely thankful because that's going to make my job a lot easier and let me have more than one pack going at the same time. For the first time on this channel, I'm going to actually be able to accomplish that successfully. It's fantastic. All right, moving on. We have some of the essences that we need out of carbon, uh, cuprous, ferric, and we need stanic, which is the tin essence. To get that, we need slate. To make slate, all you need is four flint. And we certainly have a lot of flint. We're only going to need three of the uh, essence to be able to complete the quest. So at max, you're going to need three stacks of flint. Let's see, that'll make 38. We need a total of 48. So 15... There we go. That'll be all the flint that we should- all the slate that we should need for this quest. And of course, we have tons of weak essence and floral powder from the work that we did on the uh, mystical flowers and the essence seeds. And as you can see, those are all of the tier 1 options. Tin seeds, iron seeds, copper seeds, and coal seeds. And as you can see, all of them also unlock lots of quests elsewhere. We're finally going to be able to get into doing some of the cool stuff. For now, though, let's get into getting a proper storage system set up for some of our things. He saw that Seth started building some of these storage drawers out of our jungle wood. Well, let me show you how those are made. Your basic storage drawer, well, we're going to be using jungle, is made with jungle planks and any chest. So, someone's using that table. We'll go over here. <laughs> there we go. First things first, we need a chest. Well, a number of them, actually, because I want to get... Oh... A whole bunch of these storage drawers set up for Batania stuff over here. And let's go ahead and do that. And then... I don't know if that's quite enough. Yep, that's, that's enough. Excellent. 16 of these. Each one of these can hold 32 stacks per drawer. And we check our quest book. We can see that it... Maybe not. Oh, it wants oak. It wants a 1x2 drawer. Whoops. The 1x2 drawers are slightly harder to make. You need two chests instead of the one. Not a big deal. And bam, this button here will clear your crafting station, by the way. Where was it? Jungle drawers one by two, and you get two of them out of it, and each of them can hold 16 stacks per drawer. So it ends up being about the same. It works out. Ah, uh, I wonder if there's... Nope, that's the only recipe. Is there anything I can use these for? Yes, making compacting drawers and drawer controllers and upgrade templates and that sort of thing. So... We'll have a good use for all of these, which is great because I think that having the more compact drawers will be more useful for us in the long run. Oh, good. We get rewarded with four two by two drawers, each of which can hold eight stacks per drawer, and it takes four chests, gives you four of them. So ends up working out pretty well. And huh, I thought that that would lead on to another storage drawer quest to do like upgrades or some such. The upgrade templates, oh, you need 
right? We need actual, like, real materials before we can start working with the upgrade templates. That's a shame. That's okay. Basically, if you've ever used Java, they upgrade in a very similar manner. But for the time being, we're just going to... You know what? I'm going to be ridiculous, and I'm going to put up a, put a drawer of drawers over there. These, uh... One by two jungle drawers. They do not stop you from getting into chests, so you can go ahead and leave your chests down there. And, for example, I've got an excess of these mystical blue petals. Well, I can put them all in that drawer right there. It won't show me what's in them unless we use the... I think the status upgrade will show us the fill level. I don't know if it only displays it, uh, exports it as redstone or if it actually draws something on there. It's been a long time since I've used these. But you get the general idea here. We're going to be able to store all of our petals inside of these 2x2 two two drawers, which is going to make life a lot easier in terms of inventory space than we otherwise would have had available. Let's see, that's yellow and lime. And then if you mouse over it, you can see with Wayla exactly what's in each of the drawer and how much is in each spot. With a single left click, you will get a single item. With a shift left click, you will get a stack. By right clicking once, you will put whatever's in your current hand into there. And if you right click twice, even with an empty hand, you will put everything in your inventory of that type into the drawer. I think it's time to hand in our... Nope. Four hours. On... Uh... Sundown? No, at about noon. That's right. That direction is sunrise. Okay. So, the rest is going to be... Waiting. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of waiting yet. There's just a ton of waiting in my future. Because I need to get to... Uh, four copper and three of everything else. Once we have four copper, we can make the copper seeds and get the rest of the copper essence we need, and then three of everything else will help me get a little further. What do we have here? Oh, someone set up a... Uh... Oh, how do I do it? It's shift left click. A floral orange floral fertilizer. This is actually a uh, pretty fun little chest that they have going here. They've got bone meal. Bones and floral fertilizer, and a ton of all of the good stuff inside. Making good use of our super crafting frames. Good job, folks. All right, I'm going to get the rest of these uh, organized in the storage drawers. Get the petals out of here and try to do something else about my inventory because <laughs> it's a giant mess. We'll be back soon. All right, another day cycle completed. So we have our third essence of coal. Takes three essence of coal, one charcoal, and four of these weak essence, plus an essence seed, to start making our coal seeds. I've got Everlost making some living rock for me, though I don't know where he's putting the results. Probably in his inventory. He's also been at it for a while. He's probably making more than I asked for. So that sounds like an ever lost thing to do. Yay, coal seeds. So, coal seeds produce essence of coal, and eight essence of coal turns into 12 coal, which is just great. They're also used to, yeah, I said like only one stack. <laughs> They're also used for the regular infusion stone, and, well, I mean, to make more coal seeds, I guess. But, uh, yeah. So I'm going to hand these over to Thera and let him start working on getting them up to snuff to our 10-10-10 uh, level through the same techniques that you've seen used before. And we're going to take our reward of three more weak essence. Fortunately, that doesn't open up anything new for us to do. So instead, we're going to go looking for something to work on. Uh, you know, actually, cartography basics. That sounds like a fun thing for us to do. We're going to need to get some flint tools made. We can start doing some basic mapping around the area. I did say that I wanted to get in on, uh, get into that, so let's try it out. Uh, let's see. I need some tool rods. 
So we're going to grab the tool rod pattern, toss that into our power builder. And, oh, they made, a t they made tool rod patterns already while I wasn't looking. I should have checked that, I guess. <laughs> anyway, you're going to need two flint tool, tool rods, which is going to use one uh, full piece of flint. You're going to need a couple of sticks. Ooh. Time to change you over to using these jungle planks instead. There we go. No. Oh. Yeah, you gotta be careful not to single left click your super crafting frame or it breaks off the block and goes flying. Single right click is how you craft one instead of a whole bunch. And let's see, we wanted the compass. Here we are. Drafting compass. Get. What's next? Uh, we need a, an empty map, which is just some black ink and a bunch of paper. Luckily, we have a near infinite supply of both of these things. I don't know how much paper we're going to need, so I'm just going to go ahead and make near a stack in terms of like overall usage. And where am I at on floral black powder? I'm actually running low. Uh, hey, uh, flower boy. We're <laughs> out of, uh, black petals. I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. Ah, <sighs> the things they let me get away with. There we go. One empty map. And then we're going to need the map frame. Which I believe is also pretty easy to make. Uh, either. There we go. Stack of sticks later. Alright. We'll get four more empty maps and another book. Doesn't seem to... Oh, let open up the world at your fingertips. We can create the atlas. Alright, so first off, I think that uh, the Bibliocraft maps work like standard Minecraft empty ma uh, Minecraft mapping with a couple of bonuses. A Minecraft map is purely empty until you right-click with it to say, this is the area that I want mapped. And then it will go ahead and fill in the local surrounding area. You can then use said map to either... You can either blank it out again. Oh, that's right, because you can make a larger scale map than this, can't you? If I were to... Huh. I don't remember how this works. How do you make a slotted book? Oakwood label. Hang on, I'm going to double check all of these and make sure I know what I'm doing here. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Finally, got uh, the info I needed, thank you, by referencing Twitchipedia. I did remember that you, uh, correctly, you can effectively zoom out your map by surrounding it with eight paper. So, this is the map that you have already seen. If I place it here, surrounded by the paper, as you see, it is now somewhat zoomed out. Still not quite far enough that is super useful for us, though, so let's zoom it again. Like thus. Hmm. One more and we should be able to see the coastline from where we're at. Which is kind of what I want. Huh. Nope. I guess that's as far as it goes. It's not working any further, that's for certain. It's already a map number one. Eating up my paper, but doesn't seem to be... Oh, there we go. Now it's map number six. And now we should be able to get to the coast with it. As you can see, with a Minecraft map, you hold it in your hand. You keep on running. There we go. Oh, on one of them I made an extra map. Whoops. Bad creeper, stay away. 
Ow, ow, what? What are you? Uh, it's one of those cats. Bad skeleton cat. Cool. Yep, rather enjoying the mapping. So you're going to need to run around and fill these in by hand like this, or wait until you have better travel options. Oh, hey, look, it's an Ender Mini. Ow. Maybe I shouldn't stop and chat with the Ender Mini while I'm surrounded by skeletons. I might actually die here because I am I ran too much and now I'm out of food. <laughs> ah, that was fun. Luckily, we've got this nice giant tower full of uh, jungle tree to lead us back home now. Uh... Don't go out there. You really don't want to see what's out there. <laughs> Alright, now the fun part about this is if we throw the map frame on the wall and right click it with our map, it fills in. And... We can go ahead and mark things on it. For example, I can put the... I can put home right there. And it will put that little thumbtack in there in 3D. And then if I mouse over it later, it'll... Uh, well, actually, I think I need the glasses. The Bibliocraft glasses to take a look at that. Nice. I'm not unhappy, unhappy about that. That was a fun little diversion. And if we want to get the uh, atlas, we're going to need that slotted book. So I'm going to go ahead and grab what we need for that, which is an oak wood label. Very easy to make. Back soon. As planned, we have our book and label so that we can make our slotted book. Again, the label made out of six slabs. Fine. Don't. I'll do it myself. And then we can make our atlas using six paper. The slotted book an empty map, and a drafting compass. Now, I believe with the atlas, yes, we can add in uh, the map. I believe we can add in maps that we've already... Huh, shift right click and causes that to spin. Right clicking does nothing. Uh, I guess we just have to axe it down. There we go. As I said, I believe that we can add in maps we've already done. I'm not 100% certain on the usage of said atlas, though, but we definitely get to claim our experience drops and four more empty maps. Let's see. I think you might be able to collate multiple maps in a single tome by carrying around a drafting compass in it, too. You should be able to mark locations of interest on the fly. So, I have no experience with the atlas whatsoever. I'm going to go look at more details on this. All right, quick reference of the Bibliocraft wiki taught me that the atlas is actually really cool. If we hold control while in the inventory and mouse over buttons, we can get tooltips. As this tells us, if enabled, the atlas will search the inventory for a valid map that shows where you are at the currently selected zoom level. So if we turn that on, well, nothing happens because we don't have a valid map at zoom level one. Our map is zoom level three. So it's going to go ahead and grab that area for us. And as we run around, it will fill it in. If I then also turn on auto create, if enabled, creates new maps from Blake Maps in the inventory. When auto center <clears throat> fails to find a matching map, new map is created based off of the last map loaded at the selected zoom level. So if I hit auto create, now if I run outside the area of this map, by, well, we'll head to the right. <clears throat> Continue mapping that coastline it should automatically swap to the next contiguous map going that direction. And I feel like zoom level 3 is a nice large enough area to be able to see quite a bit of things. Where are we off to? What is over here? Oh look, more ocean. I actually kind of love that this... This basically just uses the map system that's included within vanilla Minecraft, and I'm kind of glad that it's doing we're doing it this way instead of using one of the mini mapping mods because there is quite an awesome map system built right into minecraft that never gets used in the modded community see there you go it flopped right over to a brand new map showing that we're in a new area oh look we found a kobold hut 
or hobgoblin hut. I call them kobold sometimes because they get you koboldite. <clears throat> so we're going to come over here to where this guy is and hi. Do you have any trades? He's trading koboldite for diamond swords. Lame. Uh, we are going to make use of the other function, the map view function, which if we hit that add waypoint mode, click anywhere on the map to add a new waypoint, dialog will pop up and ask for the name and color, hold shift and click the map to place a new pin with the random color and name. We're going to mark right where we're at, and we're going to name this Abba Goblin. And I don't know. Make it a nice high visibility color. So white then. <laughs> and if we then mouse over it, we can see Hobgoblin. The pointer will uh, hover over a waypoint, left click to select, control and hover over map to see real world coordinates. Left click while holding control to select any point on the map. So while holding control, I can hit left click and select that point. I don't know what that does for me, though. Ah, it keeps that point selected. So I can head that way and periodically check the map and see where it is compared to me. Which is neat, nice enough. If I were to select the waypoint, uh, hold hover over waypoint and left click to select the waypoint. There, we've selected the waypoint now. Uh, doesn't give us any sort of heads up, unfortunately. I wonder... And this here... Click a waypoint to edit the pin name and color, or delete. To quickly delete a waypoint, hold shift and click. So, useful tools for managing your Minecraft maps and keeping a whole lot of them in one small area. I actually quite like the app, Atlas. This is cool. With this, uh... I think that with the atlas and a basic sense of direction, we'll be able to find our way around quite easily. Especially since it's nice enough to uh, have a pointer. Like, we don't need a compass. We It tells us exactly where we are on the map and which direction we're pointing. That's fantastic. Ooh, and if I have my times right in what the world is made of, Yes, we have waited long enough for the next round of submittals. So that means we can go back home and make some new seeds. I'll meet you there, folks. We have all of the materials that we need now to finish making the tier one of seeds. Let me show you how that's going to work out for us. All we needed to get was three iron, three tin, four copper, and plenty of weak essence, which we've certainly burned through plenty, but apparently we're not burning it near as fast as uh, Thera is harvesting it. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to get some proper automated uh, farming going very quickly so that any of you who are working on your own can end up doing some of the same things. But any of you that are working with a group, by the way, this is a, a really useful tip. Each of you can turn in the uh, can collect the reward from these repeatable quests every day. So with even two people, you have the time that is necessary. I am not taking advantage of that because I don't technically have a multiplayer team. Oh, you know what I need? I need more of you, Living Rock. There we are. And bam. Awesome. Copper seeds get. Now we're going to head right on over here and rather than wait it for these to upgrade in the least we're gonna magic them up with some of our super crafting framed magic fertilizer we have in here everything that we need to make our magic fertilizer well normally we have in here everything that we would need to make the magic fertilizer lots and lots of the essence of nature is coming out of our farm already i take it we have a uh um yep there's our 10 10 10s right in the center and i assume the rest of these are the same <laughs> and Thera nods. Fantastic. And to get our wood ash, that's a simple case of smelting up some saplings. 
and unfortunately we're very low on mutandus over here. I think I left some in the Batania chest though. And, yep, floral fertilizer and mutandus hanging out there. To get more floral fertilizer, you can simply throw your bone meal into the uh, mana pool. And of course, with this many endo flames, you're all set on any mana that uh, concerns you're going to have for this sort of small time operation. So, first things first is we're going to get those copper seeds going, get those up to mature immediately so that we can collect the one essence of copper that we need from them, and then start them, oh, you know what? Start them spreading a bit. Uh, once you have four of a seed, by the way, I have showed you guys the cross method of uh, growing them, right? Like, this is a great I'm not paying attention method, but it's slower than what you can do with, like, what Thera was doing for the nature seeds. You know how to do that ever? I don't know if he's actually at the keyboard at the moment. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Now that we have another essence of copper, we can combine that with our essence of iron to make iron seeds. Iron seeds or weak essence. Okay. And we're running out. That's fine. And basically all of your seeds throughout the entirety of your time in regrowth moving forward from here are going to be made the same way by setting up various recipes in the runic altar. Hmm. I really need to get some dirt going as fast as possible. That is really my goal at the moment is to get a large supply of dirt available. Where, oh, where did, there it is. Magic fertilizer and iron seeds. Because we're going to need to get a couple of iron essence collected. Having infinite bone meal from early on is definitely moving things along quite a bit. And actually, I'm going to want to get another copper essence before I go any further. Why? Well, because to be able to get the earth seeds, we need the tier two of the um, infusion stone. And to get the infusion uh, tier two infusion stone, we needed an extra essence of iron. So one iron, three tin, and four weak essence, plus one of our essence seeds. Oh, one more weak essence. There we go. This is only going to take longer and longer as time goes on. We're definitely going to want to upgrade our mana spreaders as quickly as possible. But it can wait a little bit. We're going to hand these in. We're going to take the weak essence reward for all of them, by the way, because... I don't see a need to grab the Metal Essence Rewards out of it, though you can take the Metal Essence Rewards to make the regular Infuser quest slightly easier on yourself if you want. But that's our next goal, is the regular Infusion Stone. Uh, where are our Coal Seeds? Fantastic. Snag you. And we'll set up some Tilled Soil. And I'm out of crops. That's fine. Thank you, Thera. Let's go and get this going. So, regular infusion stone. Made with one of each of these essences. Oh, I needed to get a dye essence too. Okay. That's simple enough. We've got some glowy dyes over right, right over here. Or Thera is carrying around some. That works too. 
Dye essence is great stuff. You can use it to make ink sacs, which can be fantastically useful. You can get your rose red, your purple dye, your cyan dye, your light gray dye, your gray dye, your pink dye, your lime dye, your dandelion yellow, your light blue, your magenta, and your orange dye all from the same stuff. Otherwise, it's used to help make the regular infusion stone. So, one of each of the first tier of essence, plus a whole bunch of the weak essence, I believe. There's iron, there's copper, there's tin, there's coal. And how many of the weak essence was it? It is four again. And there we go. One regular infusion stone coming up. Well, once it's done, that is. Huh. You know, it, oh, oh, there it is. If you look at the infusion stone, you can see how there is a bit of a circular timer that is slowly filling up. That shows you how much longer you need until it's all done. Almost. There we are. The regular infusion stone is another one that we're going to want to keep in the work table for now because with the regular stone and weak essence, we can make regular essence. And that's another one of those ones that we're going to want the machine to learn. Nice, huh? Already up to 59 regular essence and plenty more where that came from, if we want it. Let's see what else we can do with weak essence, though, before we go any further. Uh, ooh, with the right... Ooh, fire resistance petals from Magical Crops. How do I get fire resistance seeds? Oh, that's gonna be a bit. <laughs> so, the potion crops are a ways off yet. Wait, what's that? It looks so much like dandelion yellow, but it's not. Uh, there's the regular infusion stone, master infusion stone, iron seeds, coal seeds, dye seeds. Hello, ender seeds. With two ender pearls and two mana pearls, you can make ender seeds. We should probably get some of those going sometime soon, but we're going to have to go hunting an enderman. That'll have to wait for night in the next episode. Nether seeds. That's one that's going to be a lot of fun, too. But we need to get essence of nether to get those. Huh. Well, let's see if uh, we've opened up any new quests just yet. Whoa, have we opened up new quests. All right, well, regular infuser, we get six regular essence and two blaze rods. We have completed the skeleton seeds quest, so we'll take some regular essence there. And first on my list in the ooh, blaze of glory, turn in essence of nether. Well, we can't do that yet. Bauxite requires essence of tin, regular essence, floral white powder, and limestone to be able to get essence of aluminum. What we're really going to need here, though, is earth seeds. To get earth seeds, ooh, actually, we're going to want to make earth, air, fire, and water seeds before we go much further. But the one that I'm most interested in is the earth seeds. We're going to need two pasture seeds, three regular essence, an essence seed... Uh, pasture seeds are not much of an issue for us now, if we're willing to spend the resources to get them. Let's see, how many essence of iron do we need? We need eight. Because we need to get some shears going, and then we'll easily be able to... Oh, looks like we're out of mutandus again. But yeah, this will take slightly longer to do. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> to do it all solo, but not a significant amount of time because you can uh, basically bone meal your way to victory if you get yourself set up with those skeleton seeds as soon as possible. All right, that gives us eight iron ore. Now our options with the iron ore, unfortunately, we would have to grindstone things to have a like a 1.9 output from it, and... Huh, uranium, no. 
Uh, there are other options for ore doubling. They're just not showing up just yet. Ah, the Crucible Furnace from Mariculture. There's our ore doubling. And, or the Enrichment Chamber from Mechanism. We'll get into Mechanism later on. Hey, we could build a smeltery, couldn't we? And we've got that lava pool over there. All right, I think that's going to be the start of our next episode, is getting that smeltery built and working our way towards getting some of the uh, second tier of seeds, because from what I see, we are just about out of time. Thank you very much for joining us, folks. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If so, leave us a thumbs up and tell me what you liked. If not, leave me a thumbs down and tell me what you'd like to see us do better. Either way, you want to see more of this series, please click subscribe. And we'll see you next time.